So you want to play Xenoblade Chronicles 2. You've probably played a few hours already. You've sat there and read every tutorial screen line by line. But still, every time you get into a battle, this is what it feels like. Uh, what? Well, you're not alone. That's why today, I'm here to give you the secret to understanding everything you need to in Xenoblade 2. Ready? Here it is. That's it. That's the secret. All you gotta do is watch Chugga Conroy's Let's Play. Alright everyone, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Well, that was the easiest video I've ever made. Alright, I'm only kidding, but seriously, I played along with this LP as I'm sure many others have done. Not only is it a super enjoyable watch, but it's also a phenomenal guide which helped me to understand the game a lot better. However, I still want to give you my own tips in an easy to digest format, because A, I want to help you with the things that tripped me up in particular, and B, this game is so awesome and I just want to talk about it more with you all. Understanding Xenoblade 2 is an investment, but one that's well worth it, I promise you. And of course, there will be no spoilers here, because trust me, this is one story you do not want to have spoiled. Okay, now it's time. Let's dive into a few of my beginner's tips for Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Tip 1. Experiment. Never be afraid to try things. Seriously, if you have an idea, try it out, see how it works. And this applies for anything. Hey, I thought this was Xenoblade tips, not life lessons. I'm a strong believer that the best way to learn is to just start doing stuff. So play as Nia instead of Rex if you want to. Use that new blade you just pulled. Spend two hours just trying to get to that quest marker so you can finally make sense of this wonky map system. You might not always like what you experiment with, but it is the most effective way to learn. Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is a game you can get absolutely lost in. Trust me, I did. And it's okay not to know everything. Close this video and start playing right now. Or keep watching, because I have a bunch more tips that might help point you in the right direction. Tip 2. Learn about aggro. You might already know this if you played other games in the series, but if you're just starting out, understanding aggro is absolutely crucial to succeed in combat. When you enter combat, you'll notice a red ring around one of your character's feet. That character is the one drawing aggro. This means enemies are focused on them, and they're taking the bulk of the hits. Naturally, you want the aggro to be on a bulky character who can take the hits, and you don't want a squishy character like Rex or Nia tanking. That will lead to a quick death. Early game, 99.999% of the time, you'll want Tora to have the aggro. So how do I make sure he has aggro? Give Tora accessories that help increase it. The Nopon Mask is a great accessory you gain access to very early, so check if Tora has that equipped. Making sure the right character has aggro is key to your longevity in fights, so if you neglect it, you won't get very far. Tip 3. Blade Combos now that you understand aggro, another area of confusion are blade combos. This is one of, if not the trickiest part of the entire combat system. Once you understand this, it's smooth sailing. Map to each face button on the Switch controller are your driver arts, which are confusingly named because these abilities vary based on the blade, not the driver. But anyways, your auto attacks will slowly recharge your driver arts. You probably know that already. And using driver arts will fill up the special gauge. A full special gauge will let you use each blade's special ability. Blade specials are mapped to the A button. You'll see a Roman numeral over the icon. That's your special. Specials are good to use on their own, but also all of your party members' blade specials can combo with each other for big damage and additional effects. Doing so is called a blade combo. Blade combos can be tricky to pull off though, and they had me pretty confused at first. To perform a blade combo, three specials need to be done in the correct sequence, and there are three requirements in order to continue the sequence. Start a blade combo by using any special with the A button, or you can use another party member specials with the ZL and ZR buttons. You'll see them pop up on the sides of the screen when they're ready. The elemental type of the first special you use does not matter. But to continue the combo, you need to make sure the next special is of the correct type, is one level higher than your previous special, and is done before this timer up top runs out. In order to see what type of special you need to use, look at this combo tree in the top right. The glowing icon is the type of special you just used. You now need to use a special of one of the two types displayed directly to the right of it. This tree can be confusing, so ignore all the other symbols. 
I'm serious. Just look at the two directly next to the glowing one and use either of those. Those are the elements that can help you extend the combo. Your party members will automatically switch to blades of this type if they can, so don't worry about that. In addition to being the correct type, the next special needs to be one level higher to continue the combo. For example, if I used a level 1 fire special to start the combo, and I see a fire icon here to the right, I'll need to keep using arts with Pyra to build up to a level 2 fire special in order to continue the combo. Once you fire off the level 2 special, you will see the combo tree update again. Now, you'll need to build up to a level 3 or 4 special of one of the displayed elements before the timer runs out again. This will complete the blade combo and a special animation will play. These feel great to pull off, so you want to make sure that at all times you have the right combination of blade types set in order to perform a blade combo. Certain elements combo together, for example, fire combos with itself as well as water. So it's worthwhile to do some research and learn the combo paths to make sure you're engaging the right blades for battle. Tip 4, Driver Combos Okay, now that we've talked about blade combos, naturally we need to talk about driver combos as well. These are also key if you want to see good results in battle. There are certain arts that can inflict a status on an enemy. The four states are Break, Topple, Launch, and Smash. A full driver combo would inflict all four of those on a single enemy in that order. Make sure that your party always has the right arts set so you can complete a driver combo. At the very least, have someone who can break and someone who can topple. For example, Nia has a break R and Rex's anchor shot can topple after a certain point early in the game. Focus on these two effects early game, since launch and smash usually aren't obtained until later on. If the character you are controlling has a break R, make sure you're using it as much as possible so your AI party member can then use topple. Or if you have a topple art, wait for the AI to inflict break and then use it. Driver combos will leave an enemy immobilized and deal massive damage, so make sure you are always looking for opportunities to use them. Tip 5. Elemental Weaknesses Next, I have a really quick and simple tip, but one I ignored for quite a while. Oftentimes, enemies will have an elemental weakness. You can see the element a creature is weak to right next to its name. If you're struggling with a certain enemy, try switching to a blade of that type and charge up your special to hit them with. That will help you out quite a bit. Tip 6. Bonus Experience Another quick hitter here, as you visit new areas, make sure to rest at the inn if there is one. Health regenerates automatically in this game, so inns don't serve their traditional purpose of restoring HP. Instead, taking a rest at an inn allows your characters access to the bonus EXP they may have accumulated over the course of the adventure. Bonus experience is gained by exploring the world and completing side quests. And unlike the first Xenoblade Chronicles, bonus EXP is not applied right away. Rather, you need to stay at an inn to apply that EXP to your characters. So I advise you to explore and do side quests often, but make sure you're cashing in on that bonus experience. You might be surprised at how many levels you'll shoot up after just one night's rest. Tip 7. Just keep rolling. You might have already learned about core crystals and how they can give you new blades. You want to expand your team of blades early and often. If you have any core crystals, use them. When I first started, I had some trepidation about potentially wasting core crystals, so I kept them stockpiled and was stuck using the same old blades. This did me absolutely no good, so don't be afraid of using them right away. Test your luck and just keep pulling. You can't go wrong. You're guaranteed rare blades after a while, so just keep rolling. You'll come across more core crystals just by playing naturally, so if you got them, use them. Before you know it, you'll be mowing down enemies with a group of awesome rare blades. You can do something to improve your chances of pulling rare blades too. Work on improving your character's luck stat. The easiest way to do this is by equipping a luck increasing accessory like the bonnet choker to the character that is using the core crystal. Most blades you pull will look very similar. These are common blades and will all have completely random names and abilities. But don't be afraid of using common blades. They're perfectly good to use in combat and can be quite strong actually. You'll eventually gravitate toward your rare blades though. How do you know if you pull the rare blade? Their design will have much more personality. Trust me, you'll know it when you see it. Tip 8. Cancelling Did you know that the timing of when you use your arts matters? This isn't explained super well in game, 
but try to use your arts at the same time your auto attack hits. This causes a bonus effect like increased damage and faster art recharge. This blue circle will appear letting you know you did it right, but be careful of your timing. Depending on your blade's weapon type, cancel timings are different. For example, a blade with a great axe will auto attack a lot slower than Pyra's sword, so be ready for that. Arts can also be cancelled by using other arts, but you'll need to unlock this ability on each party member's affinity chart first. So as a beginner, you won't need to worry about that right away. Tip 9. Switching the target and putting away your weapon. During combat, holding down the R button causes a hidden menu to appear. This is something I frequently forgot about during my early hours with the game. This menu lets you do two very important things. By holding R and using either the A or Y buttons, you can switch your target cursor between enemies in a group. Your character will auto attack whichever enemy is currently targeted. And by holding R and pressing B, you're able to sheath your weapon, allowing you to run away from a fight faster. During this game, you'll encounter many strong enemies that will be too difficult to face at your current level. In these situations, knowing how to run away will be very useful. Don't forget these two options, because I did, and was left frantically mashing R, trying to switch targets, and trying to run away from fights extremely slowly with my weapon still drawn. I thought that's just how the game was designed. Don't be like me. Tip 10. Focus on your target. Now that we know how to switch targets, it's important to know how to focus on a target. Your party members won't do this automatically, so if you want to focus attacks on one particular enemy, maybe the one that's doing the most damage or that has a particularly annoying effect, hit the D-pad left while that enemy is targeted. This will tell your party members to focus their attacks on that one enemy. And don't forget this. When going up against a large group, this can quite literally be the difference between winning and losing. Tip 11. Check each blade's affinity chart. In Xenoblade Chronicles 2, party members aren't the only ones with an affinity chart. Every blade has its own affinity chart as well, and these are far more involved than the party character ones. You'll want to pay attention to these as the upgrades you can unlock are hugely beneficial. Focus on them early and you won't regret it. You'll notice that on each available node, there is a requirement that needs to be met. My advice is to treat these nodes like side quests, as in essence, that's what they are. Refer to blade affinity charts each time you're out exploring an area, and complete any nodes that you can. Requirements might be something like, defeat 5 of a certain type of enemy, or use a certain type of pouch item. Easy stuff like that. And finally, make sure to view each blade's affinity chart often. Certain skills won't actually activate unless you view the chart, even if you've already fulfilled the requirements. Yeah, don't ask me why it works like that, it just does. Tip 12. Use pouch items. Alright, for my last tip, I want to talk about pouch items specifically. In Xenoblade 2, consumable items are used in a pretty unique way. Using certain items on each character adds them to your pouch. This provides a passive buff to that character for a certain amount of in-game time. The sheer amount of available pouch items can make this whole system seem overwhelming, but trust me, make sure to not skip out on them. You should always try to have some sort of pouch item active. When in doubt, use items that have an increased recharge effect. Narsa Pear Jelly from the Argentum Sweet Shop is one of the best art recharge items. And any of the musical instruments you can buy in Argentum are useful to help charge your specials faster. Don't want to think too hard? My advice is just to stock up on Narsa Pear Jellies. You can never go wrong with art recharge and these will be great to use throughout the entire game. Especially for the tougher boss fights, you're gonna need those arcs to recharge as fast as they possibly can. And that's the guide. Thanks for sticking it through with me. I hope these tips made your time with Xenoblade Chronicles 2 just a little bit easier. There is a ton to learn about this game, and there's still a lot of stuff I did not cover here. But if you understand these tips, then I think you're on the right track. Stick with it, don't be afraid to experiment, and you'll become a master of this game's systems in no time. If you have a specific question, leave it in the comments below, and I'll answer as many as I can. If you found these tips helpful, consider leaving a like, as that will help more Xenoblade players find the video. And that's it from me today. Be sure to enjoy your time with this beautiful game, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, and I'll see you all in the next one.